Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and today we're going to discuss some very basic radio direction finding tactics and exercises to provide a foundation of understanding of radio direction finding. Now, no special equipment is needed, and with the equipment that you will need, you can use this equipment to locate yourself on a map or a chart with a fair degree of accuracy and navigate following a radio bearing. It is unfathomable to most people why this is even relevant with GPS and smartphones, but these methods were employed from almost the earliest days of equipping vessels and aircraft with radio communications, and it was done to great effect. The key to this technology is the presence of identifiable radio signals of known location. You know, in the past there existed a network of radio beacons in the 200 to 500 kilohertz range that identify with slow speed AM modulated Morse code and the locations of these were on aeronautical and nautical charts. Now these are disappearing rapidly and foolishly I might add due to the mistaken notion of GPS being infallible. Another source of known location identifiable signals was AM broadcast stations. The locations of these towers were once on aeronautical charts and in the limited hinterland coverage of nautical charts. Now fortunately for us, the stations are transmitting voice and identify close to the top of each hour with call sign in the area served, sometimes between identification intervals, just paying attention to the advertising can give you a good idea of the location. Now, there are many types of purpose-built direction finding receivers available, and while nice to have, fun to use and collect, they are not required for our exercises today. What is important for our exercises today is an understanding of some of the component parts and what we do and do not need in a receiver we are using for this role. This receiver on the table is a 1980s vintage marine direction finding receiver, and things useful to us are a visual tuning indicator, an analog signal strength meter, as well as an RF attenuator. But the most important part, however, is the antenna, and that's what makes it a DF receiver. And this antenna is rotatable, and it has a 360-degree scale on top of it. Now, this antenna is called a loop stick antenna, and like the loop, it exhibits directional characteristics as it receives strong signals on the broad side and has nulls on the ends. Here's an example of a loop stick antenna for us to study. This is a Zenith wave magnet, and we'll go ahead and take it apart so we can look at the inside of it. Now, a loop stick antenna consists of a core of powdered iron of a certain permeability with magnet wire windings. Now, this particular antenna here in this configuration provides us an inductance of 140 microhenries. Now, most AM radios have a small one of these antennas inside the non-conductive housing of the radio. Another example of a loop stick antenna, and this is from a County Com GP5, and this one plugs in the top of it, which is just a much smaller version of the wave magnet. So when briefly looking at the desirable characteristics that we would look for in a purpose-built direction finding receiver, let's see what we would do if we had to press something such as this into service as a direction finding radio. We certainly can do so, and I'm going to demonstrate how. This is just a run-of-the-mill, old-school transistor radio, single 9-volt battery, does AM, FM, and it also picks up the legacy analog TV audio. Now, it has a frequency display or a tuning display. Now, it lacks a receive signal strength indicator, so we're going to have to use our ears, which isn't too difficult. And for the purposes of attenuation, what we do is, is we just reduce, if necessary, the receive signal strength by mistuning the radio and taking it slightly off of frequency. The important thing is, is that when we open this up, you'll see that this has a small loop stick antenna in the very top of it. And it exhibits very good directional characteristics. You don't need any fancy equipment or the internet for that matter to do these exercises and you can do them at home or on a trip. The more you train, the better you're going to get at it and the same principles you are practicing apply to all forms of radio direction finding as these are the core competencies. You will need an AM radio, a paper map, and this is the one they give away at a rest area, so it's nothing fancy. A pencil and a base plate compass. Now the tin foil is also nice to have, but it's not required. So let's get started. Autobiolite, offering the 
So let me demonstrate how we're going to get this to work. You can see that we're tuned into a AM radio station right now. Now, by turning our radio, you can see how we null our signal. So this is maximum signal, and that's minimal signal. And that's pretty much going to give us our direction or our axis away from the station. So let's go back like here. Now, considering the loop antenna or the loop stick antenna is bi-directional, how do we divide that to make sure that the signal is not on the back side of us? And a simple way to do that is just tenfold attenuation. So from the use of that, we can determine that our signal is coming from this direction, right here. So now that we have our null, how do we determine the direction? Well, that's pretty simple. Box your needle in your compass, line up your base plate to where it's even with the chassis of your radio, and you want to keep it somewhat away from your radio because proximity to the radio receiver is going to cause the compass bearings to shift a bit. Box your needle and read your azimuth here. So now we understand how to find our null. Let's put the bearing on a map. In this exercise, we will know our location and the signal received is unknown. First, we'll orient our map and compass north. Then we're going to line up our base plate with our known location on the map and orient the base plate of the compass with the signal null bearing by rotating the bezel and boxing our needle. Forward bearing in this example is on top and the back bearing is 180 degrees opposite. Now let's say we're using a compass such as this where we can only see our forward bearing marked here with our lubber line. What we would end up having to do is, is if the bearing observed was greater than 180 degrees, we would subtract 180 degrees to get our back bearing. And if our forward observed bearing, like in this example here, was less than 180, we would add 180 degrees to it to establish our back bearing. And to follow this radio bearing, proceed forward on the bearing, keeping your needle boxed and keeping the signal nulled. Now for our second exercise, let's say we do not know our location, but we have received an AM station that has identified itself as being in Gainesville, Florida. So it's the exact opposite as our last exercise, and here's Gainesville. The signal null is on a bearing of 102 degrees from our location. 102 degrees is our forward bearing from our unknown location to our identified signal. 102 is less than 180, so we would add 180, giving us a bearing of 282 degrees from get the Gainesville station to our current location. So let's work this out. Take our compass, open it up, line it up north, and then what we're going to do, and then we're going to orient our map and compass here. Now we take our bezel, set it for 282 degrees. Now place it on Gainesville. And then all we have to do is, is box our needle. And then we draw our line. So now let's put it all together. Here's our original line from Gainesville. We've also received a station from Live Oak, and that is at 22 degrees, and then one from Perry, which is 315 degrees. So 22 degrees plus 180 is 102 degrees, and it'll be 102 degrees from Live Oak. Back to here, we make a line. Then 315 degrees minus 180 gives us 135 degrees. And then we just go ahead and make our other mark. And what we've done is, is we've triangulated our location. 
and this spot right here is going to be the area we're in. Now, mind you, this spot right here is the size of a large neighborhood or a small city. And this is the kind of accuracy you can expect from doing something like this with very simple equipment. So what you've just practiced is an example of how radio navigation was a thing before GPS, and on my bench are a couple of examples of marine direction finding radios with integral compasses from my collection, and we're going to be going over these in future content in much more detail. We will also be using a legacy aircraft ADF from my collection as well. I hope you enjoyed this content, and I hope it helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.